the Oculus Quest 2 is about to get one of the most amazing updates to date, or at least according to me. This is going to be one huge update in regards to mixing your reality and virtual reality. Let me explain. How many times have you accidentally punched someone while in virtual reality? Now, I'm not proud to say this, but it's been quite a few. Not only people, but also objects. And Oculus has for a while been teasing something called Guardian Intrusion. In fact, we have a little look at it right now. If you turn on your headset, draw the Guardian, and there's objects within your Guardian boundary when you next turn on your headset, it will warn you that there's objects within your Guardian boundary. Guardian Intrusion was supposed to be the next level of that. It was supposed to show you live objects moving within your Guardian. So if your dog walked into the Guardian, you you'd see it right there through pass-through mode. That little glimpse of just the dog in pass-through mode, just like you'd see, for example, the K830 keyboard when using that with the Quest. It was going to be quite incredible. However, after a long time, we heard absolutely nothing about it until now. Inside the latest update, we have a glimpse of something that is no longer called Guardian Intrusion. This again was found by Basti and posted straight onto our Discord inside the Quest Updates tab. This new update is now called Space Sense, and while you can actually fully enable it and check it out for yourself, Basti says it won't work without the correct permissions, which we currently do not have. But it still allows us to fully enable it using this exact command that is going to be down in the description below in case you guys want to check it out. Also, make sure to check out Basti's channel, of course, and this will give you a brand new setting with within your settings. If you go into device, you will now see a tab called Space Sense. And this is so much more than Guardian Intrusion used to be. Let's take a look. So inside the little preview that we get, when we turn on Space Sense, we can see that somebody is playing Beat Saber and they can see the lamp straight in front of them coming into view and just the lamp. Then we see a person walking in front of the person, and once again, we see them in pass-through. So this should supposedly stop you from punching people while in uh, virtual reality. Same with static objects. You can now be able to see them within space sense. And if somebody walks into your guardian, they will show up just like they normally would. Then later on, you can see that we have virtual area sensitivity, where you get fully blown settings about everything you can change. It's nice to see customizability even in settings like this. This, according to me personally, is going to be one of the most important updates of the Oculus Quest 2. Well, yes, it's no match for something like the 120 Hertz update or the Air Link update. According to me, this is still one of the most important ones. While it's important to be immersed, you also need to remember about your surroundings or else you might end up with a hole in the wall. This is going to be incredibly useful for people that like playing with their families around or have to play in a small play space where you might lose orientation and all of a sudden find yourself falling over or punching something that you're not supposed to be punching. This is something that should be added to every virtual reality headset that has cameras, if you ask me. This should be on the Index. This should be on the HTC Vive Pro. According to me, this is very important. And the fact that it's only getting added now? Well, if it was added earlier, we wouldn't have uh, quite a few casualties. But either way, this is going to be quite amazing. Let me know what you think about it down below. Are you excited for it? How many things have you punched in virtual reality? Like, what is your funniest virtual reality completely losing orientation story? I'm never gonna forget that one day when we had an open day in school and I was asked to bring in some cool tech because I was the tech guy. So I brought in the VR headset and when one of the teachers was checking it out, one of the students was just like memeing it from behind, you know, making faces and stuff. And all of a sudden it just, <gasps> it was it was the funniest thing. No students were harmed during the making of that content. I have quite a few of mine and I might let you know later on during today's live stream. Today we're live streaming making virtual reality gloves because you guys wanted me to live stream it. However, I've got more news for you guys. And this one is also really exciting. Like today's news, news is actually really cool. The Lynx R1 is a headset that we've talked about before. However, quite a few people in the comment section have actually had it on their mind and have been telling me about it. Because the Lynx R1 is a standalone VR and AR headset going on Kickstarter later on this month for $499. That's a Quest competitor. While it's not exactly the price of the Quest, that's still really cheap. And it's both VR and AR. However, it's going to be a Kickstarter. So we still need to stay wary about the fact that it 
that's what it is. It's a Kickstarter. But I have quite high hopes for it, and will hopefully be taking a look at it. Hopeful, standalone VR slash AR newcomer, the Lynx R1, will cost $499 to pre-order when it hits Kickstarter later this month. The French startup confirmed the news this week in a video you can see below. The campaign will launch in later September, though Lynx hasn't revealed its campaign's goals. We also don't know when it ships other than sometime next year, or what you'll get in the box. Though Lynx doesn't have its own controllers to pair with the device, you'll be able to pre-order a special edition version of the headset which will have a transparent front face. That's really cool. I actually kind of enjoy that concept of having things be transparent. If you guys watched my Slime Tracker video, you'll know I like making things transparent. I like seeing the tech inside. The fact that it doesn't come with its own controllers is quite concerning, because it is a standalone headset. And while we already know that it will support standalone and PC VR through something like Airlink, and probably through something like Link alone, not having controllers is still quite concerning. Because on a standalone, you don't have the freedom of something like, say, Steam VR, where you could connect any Steam VR compatible controller. It needs to be compatible with the headset. It features a Snapdragon XR2, which is the exact same one found in the Quest 2 and the HTC Vive Focus 3. And since the news broke out in July that it will be a few hundred dollars, I think 499 is quite accurate. Link's plans to subsidize the low cost of the consumer model with a cut from selling apps on its own store and B2B sales. That said, $499 still puts the headset at $200 more than the 128GB model of the Quest 2. The kit includes dual 1600 by 1600 LCD panels running at 90Hz with independent lens separation adjustment and supports hand tracking from Ultraleap. It will also support the upcoming Finch Shift controllers that can connect to a PC via a Type-C cable to play SteamVR titles, and it's compatible with OpenXR. When it comes to AR, the kit uses two high-resolution color cameras for pass-through, something the Quest only does in black and white, so that's already quite exciting if you are excited about AR technology's future. I cannot wait to start seeing AR games, seriously you guys, I will never forget that thought that came into my mind when I picked up that flashlight in the AR demo, I cannot wait to see games coming out, kind of horror games when you're around your house cannot wait to see it so that is quite interesting let me know what you guys think about the Lynx r1 have you been following its journey and are you interested in its price tag does it interest you that it doesn't have facebook and are you thinking about getting it let me know down below and finally, enough of the updates and the hardware news, onto some games. Salmon Max VR hits PC VR headsets today. The pair's VR debut lands on Steam VR and Viveport shortly. This time it's virtual already came to Quest, with a full new campaign that mixes the series' classic puzzling elements and mini-games. It marks the pair's first outing in VR and the first genuinely new Salmon Max game in years. So in case you guys are interested in the game or have been taking a look at it on Quest, it's coming to PC VR very, very soon. Blade and Sorcery is getting explorable dungeons in its next update, which, <laughs> I mean, Blade and Sorcery is a fantastic game, especially now with full body tracking. It is beautiful. The amount of holes I have in my walls is amazing. Update 10 will include an early version of a dungeon mode in which players will be able to infiltrate and explore randomized dungeons. The first iteration will include a few different room types, mixing castle and cave environments. Though this will be expanded over time too, enemy AI will also be tweaked to react a little differently, and you'll also be able to use stealth. Though developer Warpfrog has warned that this won't reach the polish of an actual stealth-focused game. Also, quite interesting, for anybody that plays Blood and Sorcery a lot, this update might seriously add to your gameplay. But yeah, while there is a bunch of other games coming out, I feel like I'm going to talk to you guys about that during the live stream because I don't want to spread this video out for too long. But yeah, I will see you guys during today's later live stream and that is going to be it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess the button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join our Discord down below, make sure to join our Reddit where I want to see you posting your spice memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way you should perform, we've got six mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that doesn't put a huge anybody. And if you guys want to, to put your content, give me a plan to Smack that subscribe button. You're for my balance. Give this video. Peace.